Good morning, Zion Lutheran Church. Today is Sunday, March 29th, 2020, and it is the fifth Sunday in Lent, Utica Sunday. We are going to be using Divine Service 3, a slightly shortened and modified version of that. We begin with our first hymn, hymn 902, Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. Lord Jesus Christ, be present now, our hearts in truth, devotion bow, your spirit sin with light divine, and let your truth within us shine, unseal our lips to seek Let them meet me, 
Genesis chapter 22. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddling his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose, and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. <clears throat> he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand, and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy, or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, saying, You have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram, caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. You delivered me from my enemies. You rescued me from the man of violence. Our epistle comes from Hebrews chapter 9. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls, and with the ashes of a heifer sanctified, 
for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who, through the eternal Spirit, offered himself without blemish to God, purify our consciences from dead works to serve the living God? Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since the death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Christ. Jesus said to them, If God were your Father, you would love me. For I came from God, and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, and has nothing to do with the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the word of God. The reasons why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, <clears throat> but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets, yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known me. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father, Abraham, rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old. Have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of earth. The 
you sing our next hymn, My Song is Love Unknown, 430. My song is love unknown, my Savior's love to me, love to the loveless shown that they might love thee be. Oh, who am I that for my sake my Lord should take breath? So as we enter this Passion Tide, it's our Lord's will that we are reminded of Him and of His love for us. It's the cross that we are to remember today. From the arms of the cross comes the power to transform and to direct us. And there we are cured from sin. There the Christian character is, is acquired. And there we must meet our Lord. On Golgotha, if we are the truly known. And what we find there at the cross is not for the squeamish. Christ's bloody death is at the very heart of all that we believe. The Old Testament is full of bloody sacrifices. The blood of the ram sacrificed in place of Isaac. The blood of the Passover, 
that marked the doors of the Israelites. The blood of the covenant splashed upon the altar and upon the people. The blood of the bull is a sin offering. The blood of the goat sprinkled upon the horns of the altar. And when Solomon built the temple, he offered up 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. That's a lot of blood. And why? Because the life of the creature was in the blood. And blood shed must be paid for by blood shed. Sin must be met by sacrifice. And apart from the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So in our epistle for today, in the book of Hebrews, Jesus is presented to us then as both the sacrifice and the sacrificer, the high priest. Hebrews tells us that Jesus enters once for all into that holy place, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood. And only the high priest could enter that holy of holies. And he does this for the explicit purpose of shedding blood. The blood of the animal sanctified, made holy for the purification of the flesh. But the blood of lambs and of rams is subject to death. Once shed, the life in the blood dies. But not this life. The blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb of God, subjects death to himself. He dies, yes, but he doesn't stay dead. His blood runs free and living through his veins even now as he is seated at the right hand of the Father in his heavenly throne. By that divine blood, we are cleansed from our sins. By his blood, sin is paid for. We have atonement with God. He purifies the conscience, a conscience that is spoiled by sin and ruined to dead works. His blood poured out upon the cross, blood shed for you, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The very blood of Christ shed on the cross is that same blood that we drink from the chalice, the very blood of Christ that we receive, and it cleanses us from all of our sin, making it possible for sinful flesh to now stand in the very presence of the holy and the righteous God. The death itself retreats in the presence of the blood of life. As Jesus promises in John 6, whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Again, he says in John 11, I am the resurrection and life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Now again, this divine blood is more than mere sentiment or an abstraction for us. For we drink it in. And in doing so, we drink in the life of Christ, even as we are cleansed and receive all the atoning benefits of our Lord's death. One of the greatest tragedies of our current situation is that temporary loss of the reception of this blood of Jesus in the Holy Sacrament. May these days created, create in these Christians, in people all around the world, an urge and a desire to then receive the sacrament as often as possible, to yearn, for the day soon to come when we can gather together again around the altar of God once more. Now, until that time, though, you are not separated from Christ, nor are you separated from the benefits of his sacrificial death and his glorious resurrection. For the means of grace are the means of grace. The word of God in which we hear and read and pray delivers that same grace and mercy earned by the very blood of Christ. For by faith, all the benefits of the cross are yours. You are still forgiven because of the blood of the Lamb, and yes, with good reason, we glory in Christ's bloody sacrifice. 
Jesus, in the passion and in the cross and in the resurrection. This divine blood of God who became man now purifies us to serve a living God and people and as people enlivened through faith. In other words, the high priest has made you priests. If you truly believe God's word, that through Christ you were made a royal priesthood of all believers. Maybe you should think a little more, especially in these days, about what that priesthood means. The vocation of priest is to sacrifice. It's a bloody ordeal. But as priests of the Lord, present yourselves, soul and body, as a living sacrifice to God with the living blood of Christ within you. And as priests of the Lord, you do not need to sacrifice according to blood, nor do you need your good works to cover up all your sins, but the blood of Christ has been shed for you. You are already a bloody people sprinkled and cleansed in the waters of holy baptism, fed and nourished by the sacraments set apart to serve in your vocation as parent and child sibling, and citizen, and teacher, student, friend, and neighbor. So that having your sins paid for by Christ, your sacrifice is now turned to the needs of others. God, it be your joy and privilege to serve the living God in your vocation and in service of your neighbor in these unprecedented times, especially now as a fear of sickness and death surrounds you. Live and trust in the blood of Christ, in the provision of the Lord, who has shed his blood, that you might have eternal life. In the name of our crucified and our living, living Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now may this peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.
by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit as the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome work and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your hearts, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us. Good Lord. To raise those who fall into strength and those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us. To give to all peoples comfort and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection at every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people. To watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. To protect and guide all who travel. To grant all women with child, and all mothers with infant children, increasing happiness in their blessings. To defend all orphans and widows and provide. To strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children. To free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies persecutors and slanders, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Almighty and everlasting God, you have promised to hear the prayers of all who in repentance call out to you. Graciously hear us so that all evils which beset us may be of no avail, that we, your servants, may evermore give thanks to you in your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn that we sing here today is hymn 431, Not All the Blood of Beasts. Not all the blood of beasts on Jewish altars slain could give the guilty conscience peace or wash away 
us take. But Christ, the heavenly Lamb, takes all our sins away, a sacrifice of nobody and richer blood than they. My faith would lay its hand on that dear head of mine, while as a penitent I stand and there confess my sin. My soul looks back to see the burden down its bed when hanging on the cursed tree. I know my guilt was there. Believing, we rejoice to see the curse removed. We bless the Lamb with cheerful voice and sing His bleeding love. Have a blessed day in the Lord.